Hello everyone, it's PCL Pe here, and today I'm going to start a new series of tutorials on Python 3.9. I made a video on how to download Python 3.9 few months back, so you can watch that video if you don't have the latest version of Python. In that video, I've shown how to download Python 3.9's beta version, but now the stable version of Python is out. So instead of selecting beta version on python.org, just select the Python 3.9 stable version. Rest everything will be the same. Once you have downloaded Python 3.9, then this video is the video which I consider to be a mandatory one before starting with the tutorials. Because I'll be discussing how are we going to approach Python in this series to get the best results out of it. I've seen a lot of scenarios where teachers are really good, but sometimes they take a lot of time in explaining a concept than actually needed for that particular concept. For example, if you're a college student and you have Python in your course, then most probably your teacher will take your whole semester for explaining the basic concepts of Python. I'm not saying that they are not good teachers, but to get a good command over a language after understanding a concept, you have to spend a significant amount of time practicing it. At least that's how my approach is whenever I'm learning a new language or a framework. So in this series, I'll try to make my videos short and precise. And in the beginning, my only motive will be to make you understand the basic concepts with very simple examples, rather than using fancy examples that might complicate things and make the video long. And the benefit of this technique will be that if you allot one hour every day to learn Python, then if the videos are short, you can learn two to three concepts every day in 20 to 25 minutes, and you can spend remaining 30 to 40 minutes just practicing them. And that will help you in getting a good command over Python because even if you are taking the best possible lectures for a language, if you don't practice it by assuming a problem and using your code to solve it, then you might know what's the meaning of a particular operator or a function in that language, but you might not be able to use it for solving real life problems. So that's why I'll try to keep my content short. Now the last thing I want to cover in this video is building a community. I don't know how many people will watch this series, but whoever is watching it, after watching a video, if you have any doubt, write in the comment section and I'll try to help you out with that. And if you don't have any doubt after watching a video, then also I want you to go through the comment section as reading questions posted by other viewers will force you to solve that problem in your mind and it will benefit you. And if you know the answer, then just reply to the comment in order to build a community at a channel. And in some cases, some people might ask some questions where it might force you to think, why didn't I think of that? And that will help you in thinking out of the box. So that's it, I just wanted to cover how you have to approach the upcoming lectures in this series and how we can together build a strong coding community which will help everyone watching this series in one way or another. So thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in the next one.